Hello and welcome to another teaching by 119 Ministries. Our ministry teaches that the whole Bible is still true and directly relevant in our lives. If you would like to know more on what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Like Paul, we fully believe and teach that we should not encourage others to place themselves back under the law. Romans chapter 6 For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. But which law are we not under? Paul actually mentions several. The law of God, the law of sin, the law of sin and death, the law of the spirit of life, the law of faith, the law of righteousness, and the law of Christ. But clearly, we should not be under the law, but under grace. Amen, and we agree. But what does that mean? Does it really mean what many think it means? Many do not test that understanding because it seems so clear in Romans chapter 6. But it was also Paul who taught us to test everything. Note that he says that sin will have no dominion over you, which means that at one time, sin did have dominion over us. Meaning this, at one time, we were under sin, according to Paul. One might say, Paul is not talking about us not being under sin, but about us no longer being under the law. And that is where the error happens. Even though it is the exact same sentence, too many make the error that the first half of Paul's sentence is about one thing, and the second half is about another thing. How many have heard the phrase in biblical study, context, context, context? Context is everything. Think about this for a moment. Something about this law that we are not under actually relates to sin having no dominion over us. The law that we are no longer under has something to do with also not being under sin. That is the context before us in the very same sentence. You would think that this would be easy to figure out, but doctrinal bias is extremely hard to overcome in one's mind. Consider this. What if Paul was referring to not being under the law of God in Romans 6.14? Did Paul mean that we are not under the law of God because we are not under sin? If it is the law of God that is no longer over us, then that would mean that Paul is equating the law of God to being sin. Now, is the law of God sin? You might be thinking, surely no one would consider the law of God to be sin. However, that is exactly what Romans 6.14 implies when you read it, if... One misunderstands the context, of course, but only if the law Paul is mentioning is the law of God, Romans 6, 14. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Actually anticipating this possible confusion, Paul appears rather accustomed to being taken out of context. He actually asks this question in the very next chapter, Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? May it never be. On the contrary, I would not have come to know sin except through the law, for I would not have known about coveting if the law had not said, You shall not covet. So it is by the law of God that we define sin. The Bible instructs us that breaking the law of God is sin. 1 John 3, 4. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Recall that Hebraically, the word law simply means instruction. Torah. Thus, it is an instruction that is against the law of God. If you wanted, like Paul, you could then call this instruction or law the law of sin. Continuing on, sin, or breaking God's instructions, leads to death. We learn this from the beginning, Genesis chapter 2. And Yahweh God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Paul intentionally covers the same thing well before we even arrive to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Thus our Creator, through Genesis, Paul, and other places in Scripture, instructs us that following the law of sin leads to death. This, of course, would be another instruction, or law, if you will. Paul refers to this as the law of sin and death. 
What we would like to propose is that Paul is introducing the concept of what is called the law of sin and death in Romans 6.14, and that he is not speaking specifically of the law of God in that context. This would mean that Paul is not saying that we are not under the law of God, but instead he is saying that we are no longer under the law of sin and death. We would propose that Paul is teaching that when we come into the faith, our Messiah's death enabled us to be free from the bondage of sin and allowed us to overcome death. Thus, we are no longer under the law of sin and death, but under grace. We are no longer under the law of sin and death. If that sounds like a stretch, we submit that any hesitation to accept this explanation might be the result of years of Christian programming that has conditioned many to believe that Paul is stating that we are not under the law of God. As we noted, the context is that we're no longer under the dominion of sin. And then it has to do with the law that we are no longer under. Then, Paul specifically mentions something called the law of sin, which is not only different than the law of God, but the law of sin is actually the exact opposite of the law of God, as Paul stated that sin is the breaking of the law of God. Yet many will still maintain that Paul is talking about the law of God in Romans 6.14, when in fact, that is the exact opposite context presented to us by Paul. Please note, nowhere in Romans 6 does it specifically mention the law of God. So we are forced to determine from context exactly which law or instruction Paul is referring to in Romans 6.14. And that can only be accomplished through the examination of the immediate context. So please afford us the opportunity to reveal the context of Romans 6.14. We already showed that the law Paul states that we are no longer under has something to do with the law of sin and its dominion or bondage over us. Romans 6.14 For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. In the same chapter, Paul states that death no longer has dominion over the Messiah. And thus, likewise, we live and death has no dominion over us as well. Romans chapter 6, verses 8-9 through nine. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Therefore, according to the context related to not being under the law, we learn that both sin and death do not have dominion over us. Sin and death are no longer over us, at least according to the context at hand. So are we suggesting that Paul is not teaching that we are no longer under the law of God, but instead is teaching that we are not under the law of sin and death? Yes, that is exactly what we are saying. There might be some who have simply heard too many times that Paul teaches that we are not under the law of God, but under grace. So we are going to allow Paul to just give it away here. Make no mistake. The law that Paul says we are not under is made very, very clear for those who just keep on reading past Romans 6.14. Paul concludes and summarizes this topic by saying this just a few verses later. Romans chapter 8. There is therefore. Notice how the word therefore is used in the conclusive and summary fashion. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Messiah Yeshua, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has made me free from the law of sin and death. This should make much more sense. Grace is receiving forgiveness for breaking the law of God, which is defined as sin. Sin leads to death. Thus, being under grace means that we are free from the bondage of sin and death that was to result from it. Consequently, we are not freed from the law of God, but instead we are freed from the law of sin and death. It would make no sense whatsoever to say that it is because of grace that we are not under the law of God. If there is no law of God, there would be no sin, as the law of God defines sin. If there is no sin, then there is no need for grace. This, of course, once again, is Paul's whole point here, Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law of sin? May it never be. On the contrary, I would not have come to know sin except through the law. For I would not have known about coveting if the law had not said, You shall not covet. If there is no law of God, there would be no sin. If there is no such thing as sin, then we would not need grace in the first place. Just like all Psalm 119 teaches us, Paul is stating that the law of God has value in pointing out to us what is sin, and thus showing us the right way to walk, that the law of God is freedom and joy.
So if context means anything, now we should all understand that Paul never said that we are not under the law of God. We cannot say that Paul ever taught such a thing. All we can say is that Paul taught that we are no longer under the law of sin and death. So, don't allow someone to place you back under the law of sin and death. If you do not want to sin and be under the law of sin, we need to be under the law of God. To not be under the law of God is to be under the law of sin. To say that we are not to be under the law of God is the same as saying we should sin. We are to prevail over the law of sin, the flesh. We are to be spiritual, which means to follow the law of God. Romans chapter 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. Now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being. But I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thank be to God, Yeshua Messiah, our Lord. Then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. So it is true that we are not to be under the law, as long as that is not understood to mean that we are not to be under the law of God. If you would like to better understand Paul, we recommend testing the teaching series, The Pauline Paradox. We hope that this teaching has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom.